Um, I just want to pick up on the point that Craig was making about the negativity that developed throughout the game. How much did that then transfer to the crowd in the stands? Oh, Dan, I think that's exactly what's going to be talked about um, for weeks and weeks probably to come. In terms of the crowd itself, I actually thought that they were quite brilliant. I mean, even outside, there were still thousands, well, hundreds or probably even thousands that were just parked out outside of Wembley trying to probably find a moment to try bomb rush the gates and get in again because the desperation was high, because the hopes were so high for um, England tonight. But I thought the crowd was actually quite good. They were constantly willing um, England on and kind of cheering for them and and singing the songs, as you heard, unfortunately, they kept booing Italy every time they touched the ball as well. But I think Craig really hit the nail on the head because obviously I've been covering England um, since the first day of this tournament and you just kept feeling like with the talent and, and all the fabulous attacking prowess that this England squad does have that eventually Gary Southgate was going to let them free. We saw a little bit of it, I guess, against Ukraine, but some people would say, look, it was Ukraine. And then you thought that this was it. This was the perfect stage. This is the final. This is a against Italy that may, you know, invite you to want to probably bring your game to another level that you haven't touched before. And again, it was just too negative, too pragmatic and too, too like, too England, I would say, too England of the past, which is, you know, what they've worked so hard in trying to get away from. And I think it's almost like 10 steps forward and then 11 backwards now with exactly what happened today. But I suppose if, you know, we know that the headlines are going to come and the headlines are not going to be nice for England at all. I know they're going to be very brutal to the players as well. And to Gareth Southgate and of course everybody should be open to criticism but if you look at it you know glass half full I think that England got through a couple of jinxes in the likes of finally beating Germany again at Wembley finally getting through the semi-final of a major tournament and making it to the final this team is still super super young they've done a lot of work over the last five years you know if you look at the youth teams as well they've won two World Cups and a Euro at the youth level and 22 members of those youth squads are part of this 26-man squad that Gareth Southgate has. They did it with the likes of, you know, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jesse Lingard, who had a great um, run in the Premier League as well. They still didn't call on the likes of James Ward-Prowse that so many people thought was snubbed. Patrick Bamford, who was scoring pretty much with his eyes closed at Leeds United. So this is a cruel end for England for the Euros, but I think it is also a nice beginning for England and what could be a very special time in English football because it seems like the conveyor belt is there. But as Craig was saying, you probably do need to start looking for someone that is willing to open them up more and have them play that night not manage the game to a T as you want because today obviously that just was not the mm. right way to go. Well thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming premium content and let's not forget as well ESPN FC seven days a week subscribe to ESPN Plus.